So, Yoda Ducha has been bragging, saying that he will not be signing the divorce and that he, he, he's not going to pull pen to paper. He said he's not going to do any of that. He said he's going to stall and also stifle all of the um, process that uh, is going to put an end to this so-called freedom that May thinks she's going to get. He said May will remain my wife till eternity. And if she wishes to go with another um, person somewhere, some you know, someday, uh, she will not end up being married. She will be passed around different men. These are the words of Yule Duce. Although he wants me to be his wife, he wants me to be part of his uh, harem, to be part of his polygamy, to be part of the Odogu's women. Now, you're about to hear some very deep, deep, you'll be listening to me, Mary's legal team. They are going to break down what is going on and what the law says, the jurisdiction and this specific particular situation of um, Yule Duce, Judy Austin and Mary. You'll be listening to everything and I will urge you to listen from the beginning of it till the end um, because um, he really dealt with it. He broke it down as it should be. Yule Duce... <laughs> Well, it is true that certain issues came up back then in some notable people's marriage and uh, the marriage took for, I mean, the divorce took so long, the woman cried out saying, enough is enough. I will tell you the story before we proceed so you understand what um, this could mean. This man is bisexual. The other part of his life is Eden. The one that he wants the world to see is the straight man with a woman. I'm talking of a man that has children, not one, not two, not three. So it's not a mistake. He needs to keep this face of I have a wife and children. But there is something sinister i want to call it maybe you might be in some other part of the world where such is accepted or you yourself as a person um you have become so liberal and you believe that this is not counterproductive to the progress of the world what i mean is expansion of the world now the wife of this individual got to know in between issues started she said i want out do you know how long it took for them to eventually split like break it took a long time why because that man he has a lot of money influence he works in nigerian petroleum corporation he has a lot of money influence he knows certain people who are into certain things that can cause certain people for certain favors. So what they will do is to look at pitfalls, look at the lacunas. They, they will create something that will continuously pull you down, stop you. Now, in the case of Yule Doche, his mom is in that department. <laughs> He had bragged several times that this divorce is not going to happen. It is not going to happen. And if it's going to happen, you will go through a longer process. Let us listen and we'll talk more. Before proceed, please like and share. Tap on the subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell. And I asked myself, why do they believe that the man has to sign the divorce in order for there to be a divorce? In other words, it's implied that the man has to give his permission in order for the woman to be divorced. That is, if the man does decide, then the woman wouldn't get it. That picture is wrong. But I know where you got it. You got it from the movies. In many movies you've watched, you will hear a man say to his wife, 
or the wife said to the man, I will never give you a divorce. I will never give you a divorce. I will never sign a divorce. So from there, many people assumed that you cannot divorce your spouse unless your spouse signs or agrees to divorce. That's not true. That's no longer true. In the past, many centuries, many decades ago, or even centuries ago, divorce was not allowed. There was restriction on divorce. It was difficult to divorce anybody. Because in those days, the churches were in control of divorce. And even to today, the Catholic Church doesn't allow divorce. Instead, they turn around and call it annulment. So if you want to break a marriage under the Catholic law, they will not see it as divorcing. They will treat it as annulment. That is, they assume that the marriage never existed. Annulment is what happens where uh, the marriage never existed or were never proper. So, because of this old attitude against divorce, there were all kind of obstacles placed on the way of somebody trying to get divorced. And one such obstacle was that they required the person you want to divorce to agree to divorce. And based on that old tradition, when you watch movies today, you will still hear somebody say, I, I will never give you a divorce. I will never give you a divorce. Or you say, okay, go and get the divorce, I will sign it. Go and get the divorce paper, I will sign it. But it's not true. You don't need the permission of the person you want to divorce in order to divorce him. In fact, he has nothing to sign. The person you want to divorce has absolutely nothing, to, cannot sign the divorce. The court will divorce you even if you don't agree. The court will divorce you even if you don't show up in court. The court will divorce you even if you don't respond. Provided that the person who sued you for divorce has met the requirement of law. Many women come to us and say, oh, uh, I don't know his address. He, he will not come to court. So that means I can't divorce him. I say, no. If he doesn't come to court, if he doesn't respond, it makes it easier for us to divorce him. Absolutely. If you don't show up, if you don't respond, then divorcing you becomes very easy because what the court will do is to move the case from contested divorce to uncontested divorce. In other words, your absence or failure to participate will treat, make the divorce easier because there is no challenge to the divorce. The court will grant it easily. What I believe caused confusion in this particular case, when people are saying sign divorce, sign divorce, let me tell you how the confusion arose, how that issue of signing came up. You know, before the court, there are two types of types of authority the court has. We call it jurisdiction. There is the subject matter jurisdiction and there is the personal jurisdiction. Subject matter jurisdiction is the power of the court to hear that type of case, to hear the particular type of controversy. For instance, it is only the high court in Nigeria, state high court in Nigeria, that has the jurisdiction to hear divorce cases if the marriage was under the Marriage Act or statutory marriage. So you cannot take your divorce case to a magistrate court. Magistrate court has no jurisdiction to hear divorce cases. If the marriage is customary law marriage, then only the customary court has jurisdiction to hear that controversy. So we call it subject matter jurisdiction because the courts are divided in such a way that some courts hear certain type of cases but not others. Some courts hear certain type of cases but not others. So when a court can hear all 
all manner of cases. We call it court of general jurisdiction. But those courts are very rare these days because courts are confined. There are some cases that cannot go to high court. It must go to magistrate court. There are some cases that can go to booth, so you have to choose. So if you are, if you are sued for divorce, don't ignore the court. Sign the acknowledgement. Acknowledge that you were served so that the court can move on faster. If you don't, there will be substituted service. We have seen situations where some people they we got substituted service. It was after substituted service that they finally went to a lawyer and the lawyer showed up. People generally may delay. If the terms of divorce are not favorable to, to them, if the timing of divorce are not favorable to them, they will resist divorce. They will, and how can they resist it? They will slow down, refuse to sign papers. But once he finally shows up, the court will hear him. Because some people will initially refuse to, to, to participate. But at some point in the hearing, before judgment, they show up. So this gentleman was dodging his service, evading. Then guess what? It was finally served on him because there's another thing that happens. If they see you, if the belief sets his eyes on you, and shows you the document and you refuse to take it he will throw it down at your feet on the ground and prepare an affidavit that it was given to you it is still service the court will treat it as given to you so when finally despite all this grand grand that man got served he went to his lawyer and the lawyer did the right thing the lawyer said hey you're gonna file an answer you can't ignore it you're gonna file an answer because there were heavy allegations against you serious allegations you must try to say something so now as i explained to you a case that is not challenged is faster than a case that is challenged obviously because nobody is opposing you you say well i want divorce because he slapped me he beat me domestic violence and the court looks and says where is the man they say the man refused to come the judge will say yes we have to believe you his absence the, we believe you. He didn't challenge. He didn't con contest it, and the court will grant divorce. But it is better for you always to go to court, present your side of the case. You need to be heard, because trial involves public record. Whatever is said in trial is going to be placed in public record. Your children and grandchildren will see it. See it. They may see it. So if you are falsely accused, you feel you are falsely accused, go to court and state the truth. Even if you are accused rightly, go to court and offer your explanation. Welcome back. The law is the law. Now, lawyers, oftentimes, the legal practitioners, that's what I mean, they often look for pitfalls, lacuna, something, an error, it could be administrative error, it could be omission, it could be anything. It could be on due process. It could be anything. That is what they look for. Um, they want to bank on the ignorance of the other lawyer on setting or the forgetfulness of the other lawyer. That is why this this um, they, they operate as a team so as to make sure that all corners they have cancels so that all corners are well looked into mary is well protected and i think um, she quickly got who she got because of um, yule duche's um, family she knows that uh, they can influence and she knows the pain that some women um, have gone through now marriage has been kept this way and divorce out of it to kind of um, protect that entity called family that is why it has been made difficult if not anyone can just get into marriage today and tomorrow they declare themselves um, separated and divorced it, it will be something that people will not want to cherish anymore but in this 
um, case of Yule Doche and Mary. I think um, it is clear. It is clear. There is nothing to argue about. Um, more. More. In fact, any more. I think the only thing Yule Doche is arguing about, apart from saying, no, we are into skit making, we are into this, we are into that. Um, no, it is not true. Um, the only thing that he is arguing about is the property. It is about the finance and nothing more. 